This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather, ho there, it's Jeff Gooder, and welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy for today, May the 17th, is a boxer who is iconic. More more so outside the ring than inside the ring. He's a motivational speaker and an occasional actor. He is 66 years old today. He competed between 1977 and 1997, winning world titles in five weight classes, the lineal championship in three weight classes, and the undisputed welterweight champion. He was part of what they call the Four Kings, a group of boxers who basically fought each other throughout the 1980s. Sugar, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, the guy that I'm talking about, Roberto Doran, Thomas Hearns, and Marvin Egler. And they actually kept boxing relevant in the post-Ali era. And Leonard would be Iconic. He would be the first fighter to earn more than a hundred million dollars in fight purses. He's named Boxer of the Decade in the nineteen eighties. He's one of the best pound for pound, and that's Sugar Ray Leonard. So anyway. So he was trying his best to make the US Olympic team. And he was. He was the late welterweight representative at the 1976 Olympics in Montreal. The U.S. Olympic team was good. They had the Sphinx brothers, Leon and Michael. They had Howard Davis Jr. and John Tate. Some say the 76 U.S. team was the greatest boxing team in the history of the Olympics, although 1984 would say, hold my beer. Anyway, Leonard looks fantastic. His first Olympic bouts were by five pounding decisions. No judge thought he was going to lose. In the semis, he beat Shershaba, winning 5 0. He would face the great Cuban Andres Aldama, who actually knocked out his five straight opponents in the, to get to the final. So it was US Cuba. It was amazing. Aldama was hit hard. He had a few eight, standing eight counts, and Sugar Ray won 5 0 and Olympic gold medal. Leonard announced, I'm finished. I fought my last fight. My journey is ending. My dream is fulfilled. Now I want to go to school. He was given a scholarship to the University of Maryland to be business administration and communications. It was a great amateur superstar. So he beat the sweet Ulf Carlson, the Russian, Valery Limosov, the Brit, Clinton McKenzie, the German, East German, Ulrich Bayer, the Pole, Shershba, and the Cuban, Aldama. But there was a change of plans and all that. Well, he had a baby with his high school girlfriend in 1973. So anyway, there was a problem. Sugar Ray Leonard was named in a paternity suit because his girlfriend needed $156 a month in child support. So Leonard learned that he needed the money to help his to help the um, endorsements. So anyway, Leonard was supposed to get lucrative endorsements, but because of the paternity suit, he was not doing that well. Sugar Ray's father had meningitis; his mother had a heart attack. With neither parent able to work, with his child and the mother's child. To support. Leonard said that he needed a professional boxer. So he did. His first world title was for the welterweight belt in November 1979 against Wilfred Benitez, the Puerto Rican. Benitez was 38-0-1. So it was huge in all that. Leonard actually led on the scorecards, but he took down Wilfred Benitez. Six seconds, with six seconds left in the fight. So he did it. He did his job. And now he was defending the welterweight belt against Roberto Duran in the brawl in Montreal. Surprised that Leonard and Duran would fight in Montreal at Stade Olympique. But on June 20, 1980, one of the best boxing cards ever in Canada, it would be Sugar Rain Duran. 
Sugar Ray thought he would have the advantage because, you know, he won the Olympic gold medal in Montreal, although at the forum, if you will. Duran was the, undis the former undisputed world lightweight champ for six plus years. He was 71 and one. It was the number one welterweight. Duran was given $1.5 million, whereas Duran Leonard got $9 million. So Sugar Ray and Roberto fought tooth and nail and all that. Duran was given a unanimous decision. So basically, all three judges said that Duran won. The problem with Sugar Ray is that he wanted to fight toe to toe with Duran and basically wanted to fight Duran with his stuff in the Duran style, but that failed miserably. He lost the fight. Anyway, he fought from the heart and all that. But Sugar Ray wanted a rematch, and he got it. November 1980 at the Superdome in New Orleans, he would fight in front of 25,000 fans. Leonard got $7 million, Duran got $8 million. A lot of people said that Duran should not have had to fight. Sugar Ray right off the bat because, you know, did Sugar Ray deserve it? Unfortunately, though, Duran had issues. After winning the title in Montreal, he went on a binge and ballooned in weight. So basically, yeah, he knew what to do. Leonard started to taunt Duran, and Duran waved his glove, no moss, no moss. So Leonard did it. Sugar Ray actually was going to win, probably win it on the scorecards anyway, but Duran said that he, uh, he had to quit because of stomach cramps, because of his weight issues and all that. It was shocking all that. Anyway, it didn't matter. Well, Duran had to have an eating binge prior to the fight because he needed to get up and wait and all that. So Leonard got it. So anyway, Leonard decided to move up to the junior middleweight to face Ayu Kalue, the Ugandan, in Houston's Astrodome. Anyway. Leonard took down, took down Clue in the first round. And then came a big super fight between Sugar Ray and Thomas Hearns at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas to unify the World Welterweight Championship. It was huge. The fight grossed 35 million buckles. All that. Hearns was 32 0 with 30 knockouts. Hearns was looking good throughout rounds 9 to 12. Angela Dundee then told Leonard, you're blowing it, son, you're blowing it. Well, in round 14, after staggering with Hearns, Leonard pinned Hearns against the ropes. Big combination, referee Davy Pearl said, uh-uh, no way. And he stopped the contest. Sugar Ray is the unified World Welterweight Champion, and Hearns was leaning on everyone. Scorecard. So anyway, Leonard looked pretty good and all that. Sugar Ray got knocked out by someone. This guy named Howard. I don't know. Kevin Howard. So Kevin Howard shocked a lot of people. But yeah, Leonard did it. Leonard decided he had enough and left after 84. But in 1986, after Sugar Ray was ringside to see Marvin Hagler took down John Mugabe, Leonard said he wanted to fight Hagler. Said he can be Hagler. All of that. Leonard had a big inactivity in eye injuries. People were not so sure. So the fight was the super fight. April 1987 at Caesar Palace. Leonard was given 11 million and Hagler 12 million. Hagler was a heavy favorite. 
and all that. Well, it was a tight match. Leonard was given a split decision. Judge Morelli scored at 115-113 for Leonard, and a Judge Lou Filippo had 115-113 for Hagler. And L Judge Jose Guerra said 118-110 Leonard. So it was amazing and all that. They thought that Hagler should have won because he was the best and landed the heart of punches. It was so hard to believe. It was still a fight of the year. Leonard basically said that, you know, he was done for. Then Sugar Ray would retire and face another comeback against Donnie Lalonde. It was amazing and all that. But Leonard kept knocking down the lawn, and the fight was over. Sugar Ray won the match. Leonard did vacate the light heavyweight title, to, but kept the super middleweight belt. Leonard would defend the WBC super middleweight belt against Thomas Hearns in a rematch. So it was Leonard Hearns 2, June 1989. But the fight was scored a tie. Leonard retained the belt. Hearns won the fight thanks to Jerry Roth. Tom Kosmarek scored it for Sugar Ray. And Delby Shirley scored it 112-112. If Shirley gave Leonard a 10-9 margin instead of a 10-8 margin, then Hearns would have won by split decision. But Leonard admitted that, Sugar, uh, that Thomas Hearns deserved the decision. So then, Leonard and Duran would fight again for the third time. 1989, they had the two fights in 1980 that I tried to describe. Leonard would defend his belt against the WBC middleweight champ, Roberto Duran. It was amazing. Well, Leonard would use lateral movement and won by a lopsided 12 round unanimous decision. Leonard would try a few fights, even against Hapacho Camacho in 1998. But he was basically a boxing analyst, which was amazing and all that. He loved doing it. Sugar Ray was part of Dancing with the Stars in season 12. And it only lasted four weeks. Sugar Ray was actually the subject of a Seinfeld episode. In which George tries to flatter his boss by saying he looks like Sugar Ray Leonard. The real Leonard was told by friends and family about it. Sugar Ray Leonard was also parodied on the famous show In Living Color by Tommy Davison, who did get Sugar Ray's mannerisms pretty well there. Leonard would marry his high school sweetheart because he because he still had that son, his six-year-old, Ray Jr. In 1984, they had another son, Jarrell, but they were divorced by 1990. And Juanita said that her husband physically assaulted her while under the influence of alcohol, and he was a cocaine user. But Leonard did confirm his wife's claims, but said that the problems of their marriage was not because of drug and alcohol use. All that... Anyway, Sugar Ray said that he was free of alcohol since 2006. He would be, he would actually be married, introduced to Bernadette Roby and were married in 1993. Leonard, Sugar Ray is actually the godfather of Khloe Kardashian. Really? Huh. He's done a lot of charity work. He did not like child sex abuse and all that. He was 36, 3 and 1 in his professional career. Although he did lose his last two fights to Terry Norris and Macho Camacho. So, yeah, he was an icon. I mean, 
He lost to Camacho, lost to Norris. He had that tie against Hearns, but he lost to Roberto Duran in Montreal, which was a great boxing card. You don't know how great that boxing card was. But anyway, I'm done talking about this thing because it's taken a long time. Sugar Ray is so sweet. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.